Cost basis refers to the original value of a security you own. When you sell a stock, bond, or mutual fund, you use the cost basis to determine your profit or loss, which in turn affects the amount of tax you owe. Multiple methods can determine one's cost basis, one of which is the first-in, first-out method, or FIFO. That is, you start with the purchase price of the first securities you acquired. Marty bought 20 shares of XYZ stock for $10 each in January of this year, and then purchased 40 more XYZ shares for $15 apiece in June. As a result, Marty had a total of 60 shares in his possession. A few months later, he sold 30 shares for $25 each for a total of $750 in proceeds. Using FIFO, his cost basis would be $200 plus $150, which is $350. 20 of the 30 shares he sold are from the first batch he bought in January for $10 per share. The remaining 10 of the 30 shares he sold are from the second batch purchased for $15 each in June. In this case, Marty's net profit is $400, or $750 in proceeds minus the $350 cost basis. If Marty plans ahead, he could instead use the specific identification method to reduce his taxes this year. When he sells his 30 shares, he could use the more expensive shares as his cost basis, which is $15 per share from the second batch purchased in June. His cost basis will be $450, so his profit for tax purposes will be $300, or $750 in proceeds minus $450 cost basis. Consequently, he owes less to Uncle Sam. Investors can use still another method called average basis. Marty would simply add up the total cost of his purchased funds, which is $200 in January plus $600 in June, multiply by 30, which is the number of shares he sold, and divide by the total number of shares he acquired, which is 60. Therefore, his cost basis is $400. A number of factors beyond purchase price can affect one's cost basis. Commissions and other transaction fees increase basis, while stock splits can decrease it.